So check out this view. What do you think? Oh, it's gorgeous. Welcome to Pensacola. We are standing inside Fort Pickens. Oh my God, where does this thing go? Yeah. <laughs> you can't get any more pressure than that right there. Who's got 53? Oh, that's dangerous. Isn't good. It? Salt water for you yeah. is your mojo. So check out this view, what do you think? Oh, it's gorgeous. Welcome to Pensacola. This place is over 450 years old. It was America's first settlement. I didn't learn that in school. <laughs> it was also under five flags, Spanish, French, British, Confederate, and American. Really? It's wild. Check this out though. I'm feeling a little Top Gun today. What do you think? I think I'm gonna swoon. That's because it's home of the Blue Angels. So we've got history on tap this week, and I tell you what, hopefully there's a chance that we can check out the Blue Angels. Oh, you know how I feel about men in uniform. So that's the beach ball, very iconic water tower here on the beach, and it definitely means we have arrived. Pensacola Beach, I love the Florida Panhandle. I love the beaches, they're so pristine. It's kind of a little bit of country, a little vacation vibe. I'm ready for a fun week. All right, here you go. On the left-hand side is the Pensacola Beach RV Resort. Looks like the place to be. It's really easy to get here. You take I-10 across the Panhandle, take the Bayfront Parkway exit right into Pensacola Beach. All right, we're here. Let's go unhook and then go find out where we're camping. I'm so glad we got the Blue Ox this year. It gives us such opportunity to camp and then explore. Yeah, freedom to explore. Love it. I know. Once we got here to the campground, the first thing we have to do is unhook our tow vehicle. It's what we call the toad. When we put our jacks down for the week, they're down, it's home, and then we just go out and venture out with our toad. Remember the first time I towed, I kept looking in the rear view camera thinking, who is this jerk following yeah, us yeah. when it's <laughs> our toad? Yeah. It's that easy. After we set up camp, got everything where we wanted it to be, we pulled out the rad bikes and took a ride down to the pier. Oh. And Mother Nature once again did not disappoint. I'm sweet on you. Yeah. Cause you're sweet like honeydew. All right, we're gonna cross right here. Like the first flower that blooms in spring. Like summer day when the bluebird sings, I'm sweet on you. I mean, look at this, sugar sand, it's beautiful. Yeah. Our first look at Pensacola I Beach. I know, I mean, look at this pier too, it's huge. I mean, look how busy it is. I know, look at all the surfers over here. Oh, check them out. I bet you could show them a thing that, or two. That makes me want to be out there. I don't longboard that much. I'm more of a shortboarder, so I need a little bit bigger weight. But man, I would love to be out there. That would be fantastic. <laughs> and with the good Lord's grace and a bottle of wine, when that big orange sun hits that water line, we'll be living and laughing and loving the whole night through. My sweet little honeydew. You know that this is my special place. I grew up on a beach like this on the Space Coast. Here in Pensacola Beach, this is gorgeous. Listen, salt water for you yeah. is your mojo. Yeah. I get it. You know, it's so different for me. When I grew up, the sun was always setting east to west. Being up here in the panhandle of Florida, you know, east and west is, you know, that's Texas straight that way. You know how directionally challenged yeah. I am. So I just realized that that's Alabama over there. Correct, correct. <laughs> So you see all the, you know, that's not fog down there. That's the salt mist. Um, oh, you I'm, talk to the hair uh, about the salt mist. Sorry. But it was nice today.
I could skim board, boogie board, or surf. Which one would you do? Boogie board. <laughs> So we woke up on day two, jumped in the toad, and made a short drive about eight miles through the Gulf Islands National Seashore. It was a windy road through the beach all the way to Fort Pickens. We walk up and we meet Ranger Kaz, and boy, did he know a lot about Fort Pickens. Welcome, I'm glad that you're here. We are standing inside Fort Pickens, which is a massive, a sprawling brick fortification located on the west end of a barrier island called Santa Rosa Island. The brick walls that you see behind me, those walls were built here between 1829 and 1834. When you walk into the fort's historic entrance, you're gonna be walking through a brick tunnel way. You're gonna see brick and masonry construction materials all around you. You're going to see arches. You're gonna see what today look to be these very artistic angles. You're going to see long, dark tunnel ways, and you're also going to see cannon. It weighed 50,000 pounds. The United States was largely concerned about European powers like Great Britain, France, and Spain meddling in American affairs. So these forts, like Fort Pickens, would be placed here, not necessarily to go and engage in warfare with those powers, but rather to be here as uh, these titans on the American shoreline to deter any interference in the United States. This is incredible architecture. I know. To think that it was done one brick at a time. And really just for appearances. They wanted to look like look, they had a presence to the foreign powers, but not to American citizens. I suggest that you go and tour Fort Pickens. The best way to do that, though, is using the official National Park Service app, which can help guide you to 16 numbered stops around the fort, and you could read about what you're looking at at each stop. Wonder where this goes. Man, this is much deeper than Fort DeSoto. I mean, it's huge. Oh, look at this thing. Hold on, I got my flashlight. Let's All check right. it out. Uh oh, I don't think you're gonna enjoy this. Maybe it connects down at the other end. I don't know. You think Are you can do this? Are we supposed to go down here? I don't know. So you go to the left, okay. and I'll go to the right, oh. and hopefully it connects. Oh my at the gosh. End. Oh my God, look at that stuff. Oh. oh my God, where does this thing go? Look at this thing. I can't imagine what they did. Unbelievable. I mean, it's not very wide. Oh, no. Oh. It doesn't connect. The cave, this does not connect. I have no oxygen. Is she OK? I think I'm losing oxygen. Are you OK? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> It went nowhere. I know, I thought it connected, sorry. Oh, no, I need air. <sighs> Things you make me do, McCabe. Coming out of that tunnel and then getting to walk up top and the view up there. So this will be a little bit different vantage point from up top here. Oh yeah, kind of a bird's eye view. We should be able to see the whole peninsula from up here. All the ocean and yeah. the sugar sand yeah. dunes. And the river. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at the ocean. It's incredible. Enemy yeah, ship approaching. approaching. <laughs> you can see him from way off. I mean, look at that out there. Yeah. Well, the naval base is right over there, right? Yeah, this is a great place to watch the uh, Blue Angels fly. We're going to be at the museum tomorrow. I know, I can't wait. All right, you ready for camp? Let's I go am. back to camp. Yes, please. All right. We got to check out Fort Pickens today. To end the night, we're going to walk out on the dock and watch the sunset. Well, it's a little windy today with uh, Tropical Storm Nicole, I think is her name. Guess what? I'm not sweating. <laughs> and although I still don't have good hair. <laughs> Actually, you do have good hair in this direction. It, <laughs> I don't care where we are, though. This is wonderful. Any sunset with you is wonderful. There you go. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.
We woke up on day three, jumped in the tote for a short drive over to the National Naval Aviation Museum. We were in for a full day of history. You walk in, you're immediately greeted by sights and sounds and planes hanging all over the place. You don't know where to start first. It's spectacular. All right, which way do you want them to go? Uh, right here. Coming right down the middle. Right down here is the line. Oh, whoa, whoa, overcorrected. Here he comes. Oh, oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, look at the shadow. That is cool, That man. is cool. This is the FH-1 Phantom, but boy, if you look at just. The cool thing about this museum is you can touch them. Hands-on museum. Close, hands on yep. museum. What was very cool is Captain Sterling walks up while we're at their newest exhibit for Devotion, the movie. Greetings. Thank you. How are you enjoying your visit? Oh, it's impressive. Well, great. It's a fun place to visit. It's great to meet you here. This is the Devotion, the newest exhibit. This is our newest exhibit. Uh, we just unveiled it at the end of October, and it details uh, the story of Jesse Brown and Thomas Hudner. Jesse Brown being the first African-American naval aviator in our service. Wow. There's a lot more to do here. There you sure want to show is. Us around? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, let's go. This airplane is the sole surviving airplane to have flown in the Battle of Midway, participated in the strikes. And as you can see, some of the patches here are the over 200 bullet holes that it got in that combat action. What is of significance, that number, 2106, is how we identified that that airplane flew on 4 That's June 1942 this. on that fateful day and that probably the most significant battle in the Pacific during World War II. So this is the new building. It is. We call it Hangar Bay 1. It was built and dedicated in 2011, coincident with the centennial of naval aviation. And it hosts our post-World War II exhibits, one of which is Marine 1, wow. which is the Navy Marine equivalent of Air Force 1. It's the rotary wing way by which we carry around the presidents of the United States. This is the EA-6B Prowler. It's a younger cousin of the A6 Intruder, and it's an airplane that I actually have quite a amount of time in. It's a carrier-based electronic attack airplane that jams enemy radars or shoots missiles at enemy radars that are otherwise trying to shoot down our good guys. The Navy has treated me wonderfully. I did a full 30 years. If folks make a decision to join our military, serve our great country, it's a wonderful opportunity, and I'm very happy because Ben Scull will be in the cradle of naval aviation. I see the young men and women that are joining our services to serve our country on these flight decks of these aircraft carriers and to fly these wonderful airplanes, and we're in good hands. So this is the main attraction here at the museum, Blue Angels. I've never seen the Blue Angels fly. Could you imagine if we could? Well, here at the museum today, I've got something special for you. They're gonna fly just for you. Stop! All in formation, four of them. All in formation, take off. From the minute they walk out to their planes and they climb in, I start getting goosebumps. Oh, big roll. to see the two single planes going at each other. They're gonna crisscross, watch this. They're gonna turn sideways. Yeah! Oh my God. I think I got a stomach ache and a headache from just clinching every time they went. <laughs> now that's just showing off. They show up out of nowhere. You turn and you're watching this one and here comes another one. Yeah! We were so pumped, so close to the action. You could feel it in your chest just when they went by and they turned. At one point, they were doing this stall. It was just amazing to watch being that close to the show. I was worn out after watching it. I couldn't have asked for a better day. You could feel it in your bones. I couldn't be more proud of being here today, in the Navy, being American. If you come to Pensacola, come to the National Naval Aviation Museum, you gotta check out the Blue Angels, the best six pilots in the world. You 
ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. We woke up, the weather had brightened up, beautiful sky, and you took us to Perdido Key. The world famous Florabama. It's been quite a while since we've been here. It's been a while, and I've never been in the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> We got to Florabama, we met Jennifer, the manager there, and she's been doing this a long time. She sat down with us and told us all about the world famous Florabama. So back in the day, there wasn't really anything in this area, and Alabama was a dry county, and you could come over here and get you some libations on the weekends. It's like a big adult tree house, so you have different little rooms that you can go in. Man, how are we gonna find our way out of this place? Yeah, I don't know. Wow, check this room out. Music's definitely the heartbeat of the Florabama, so anytime you walk in, you're gonna see music going on. Worked here for almost 10 years, and then coming here my whole life, pretty much. Every day is different. You always meet so many different people, all walks of life. People leave a little bit of their own memories here, so over time, there's just more and more that goes on. There's not a piece of real estate in this bar that doesn't have a license plate, a sticker, or a magic marker on it. I actually have an idea. Oh, you got one of the stickers. Are we there yet? Let's put it on the stage. Okay, cool. You ready? Oh, yeah. We are now eternal rock stars. Always be on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. The Bushwhacker is our house cocktail, so it is a crowd favorite, so you can't leave without trying a floor beam of Bushwhacker. Oh, here they come. Oh, yeah. Look at those. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> come on. This is this thick. This is thick. I'm just, it's like They're an ice fresh. cream. <laughs> I can't get in there. Oh, that is we'll dangerous. give you a spoon. Uh, my camera guy, George, would love this. Absolutely like? love this. Oh, that's dangerously Isn't good. It? Yes. <laughs> so now I understand one bushwhacker, two bushwhacker, three bushwhacker. Floor. And hit floor. the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that's tasty. You can get carried away with these. Can we walk around with these and explore a little bit? Sure. I hope that y'all do. Well done. Thank you so much. Oh, thank y'all. God, this is fantastic. All right, we're out of here. So, Alabama over there. Yeah, it's about right there. Florida over here. We're in Florida. Yep. Florida, Bama. Takes a long time to get out yeah. of Florida. This is a perfect pit stop. You can't beat the view, right? No, and right. cheers to another perfect day. Boy, there's not much left. <laughs> Watch out. Gotta love the bushwhacker. One of the perks of having an RV is that we have a refrigerator and freezer. We have one more stop plan, and that's famous Joe Patty's Fish Market. We got to meet Frank Patty. He's 90 years old, but to spend some time with a man that's been doing this for this long and providing for this community, Look oh my this word, burger. look at this place. Oh, wow. We got all the seafood you want right here at Joe Patty's, and there's not another place here in the area that's got everything that we have. 81. Thank you. 81. 81. Thank you. Get a number, and when we get that number, we call it. You come on up and tell us what you want. Who's got 53? 53. Oh. Anybody, somebody, nobody? and then we take care of it, and uh, you're happy when you get home, and you'll be happy when you eat it. There you go. Ting. You can't get any more fresher than that right there. I'll take some of those, Sandy, for sure. That's delicious. A change in the cash for us in case you go over $100. We can take care of it. I think we might need a, a bigger basket. Look at this, sugar sand. We have had such a great time here in Pensacola. I've enjoyed the entire week. What was your favorite part? Oh man, my favorite part was seeing the Blue Angels. Yeah! The adrenaline from watching the Blue Angels is still rushing through me. Thank you to Captain Sterling Gillum for taking us out there and doing something that we had no idea we were gonna get to see the Blue Angels. It's incredible! Pensacola is a very cool city. Gotta love the bushwhacker. I can feel the sea breeze already. We're lucky we have an RV because I'm packing my freezer with Joe Patty's fish. <laughs> Just the way I like it.